We've discussed common ground before, the negative terminal of your circuit, not earth ground. Basically, if you have two different power sources involved, or more than two, you have to reference voltages between them somehow. They both have to measure relative to a common standard, because voltages are a difference. One power supply's voltage is between its positive and negative terminal. The other one is between its positive and negative terminal. But those positive and negative terminals represent a charge. The charges on each end create the voltage across the circuit. So you have to equalize one end or the other, otherwise it just can't can't measure, at least not correctly. And by convention, we use the negative terminal, we refer to it as ground, so that becomes the common ground. You simply tie the grounds together, and the electric fields work themselves out. So let me now demonstrate with my oscilloscope the problem. So I have here my Arduino hooked up as an oscilloscope, and you should be able to see the blue line. This is just whatever voltage happens to be read by the analog port with nothing plugged in. You can see it moves slightly as I move the Arduino around. I've got it set on 64, whereas the true resolution is 1024, just so it's more visible. If I plug something in, just a loose wire, to the analog zero port, then you can see it act as an antenna and pick up the variations. I hope this is clear enough. It's a little hard to do picture in picture. But in any case, what I'm going to do now is turn on my power supply, not the Arduino power supply, but my bench power supply. And I'm going to use my potentiometer breakout board. I'm just going to connect it so that I have a simple voltage divider that I control by turning the knob up and down. And I'm going to measure that with the Arduino. So let me go ahead and turn my current limit up so it starts generating the voltage. 10 milliamps will do at five volts which matches the Arduino's power. So now I'm going to hook one side of the potentiometer to the positive from my bench power supply. The other side, so this is the two outside pins, the other side to the negative, again of the bench power supply. And then I'm going to take out this wire and switch over to one of my header wires so I can bring the middle of the potentiometer over to my breadboard. And I won't bother to add a resistor because the input pins are high impedance. So I will plug this into the analog port and you'll see this is measuring a potentiometer that's not moving and it's a waveform. This is not an antenna anymore, wiggling the cord does nothing, but we're getting a waveform. Let's make it even more clear. Now if I turn the knob, very little happens. Some strangeness is going on here. But what if I take one wire and simply connect from the negative of the bench power supply to the terminal label ground on the Arduino? And all of a sudden, we have a nice stable waveform. And as you can see, my power supply is drawing zero milliamps because of the high impedance input. It's drawing current, but it's too little for this to display. So now, I have the potentiometer roughly in the middle, and we're getting a line roughly in the middle. So what if I turn it up, all the way up, turn it down, back to the middle, three quarters, one quarter, back to the middle. Now it's working. If I remove that common ground, we're back to a waveform. This is the common ground. The power supply, the bench power supply, is generating its voltage, however. The Arduino is getting voltage from the USB port, which is coming from the battery of the laptop, and whatever performance characteristics that has. Now the battery power supply is likely to be much more stable. It's unlikely to be wavering like that, so it's probably the power supply. In fact, since it is a waveform, perhaps it's from the alternating current of the wall that's leaking through something. But the point is, five volts is being generated. And no matter how the charges vary, as long as there's always five volts, it works as if the power is perfectly stable. But if you have separate circuits, it's revealed, and this is when I touch the wire. You can see there's a variation there. So I'm changing the measurement that the Arduino uses. There's all kinds of funky stuff that goes on that I couldn't explain in detail without being a physicist. All I know is that if you hook the grounds together, it's measuring relative to a stable difference. However this varies, however the negative there varies, it's equalizing with this. There may be current flow, not much, but the point is it's equalizing so that there's always a common 
difference between the 5 volts generated there and going through here and the 5 volts it's measuring the analog against. And just to demonstrate, I'm going to turn off my bench power supply. See the voltage goes down to zero. Remove the common ground. And now of course there's no circuits, there's no power flowing, so we're getting weirdness. But I'm going to plug, instead of using the bench power supply, I'm going to plug the potentiometer directly into the Arduino. So we'll go to where it says five volts, and then I'll connect to ground there. Now, you'll notice that I have a stable line, but changing the potentiometer does nothing because it's just going across. So now I will connect to another of the ground ports. And there we are. Now the current is actually flowing through the potentiometer properly using its own ground and it behaves as expected, as you would think, because now there's only one power supply. Simple and easy. This is relevant when you have two systems that are communicating in some way. In this case, when you're trying to use one as an oscilloscope for the other, it also applies when you're using a serial cable. You're going to want to join the grounds to make sure that the ones and zeros that represent bits are measured correctly relative to your common ground. Having multiple power supplies does not mean you need to tie the grounds together. It's situational. Basically, when one is measuring a signal sent by the other one, that's when you need a common ground, when one is measuring the relative to the other. If you just have two different power supplies powering two different things, like an Arduino powering the base to emitter junctions of transistors, and then a bigger power supply running through the transistors to power the motors or whatever. That does not need a common ground because they're not measuring. They're simply providing power. And that's it. So I'll be seeing you.